Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here, and welcome back to my Star Wars Franchise Review Series. And right now we're concluding the prequel era films with Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith from 2005. On May 19th, <laughs> the Jedi must unite. So oh, I have a bad feeling about this. To fight the ultimate battle. Crush them! Against the evil Sith Lord and his new apprentice, Darth Vader. Oh no. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Rated PG 13. Star Wars Revenge of the Sith stars Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, Hayden Christensen, Ian McDermott, Samuel Jackson, and directed by. George Lucas. The plot of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith is that as the Clone Wars rages across the galaxy, a sinister Sith Lord known as Darth Sidious seizes control of the Republic and corrupts young Anakin Skywalker to be his dark apprentice, Darth Vader. Obi-Wan Kenobi must now confront his fallen friend in an epic lightsaber duel that will determine the fate of the Star Wars galaxy. So here we are. This is the last film in the prequel trilogy era. And well prequel era. Because there's one other film that takes place during this time period now. With the Clone Wars animated film. And honestly thank goodness. Thank goodness I am done with this era. Like the first two were pretty tough to get through. But, I will say, this one, not bad. What are my positives with Star Wars Revenge of the Sith? Honestly, for me, there's a lot of positives in this, actually. For one, this is the first time out these prequel movies, I feel like this is the story George Lucas wanted to tell. And something that was made to begin with from the get-go. And only that, the writing's better in this for the most part. Uh, the action, the music, even the acting is better. For the most part. Uh, in fact, within the first... Like, seriously, this looks like literally while doing the Star Wars franchise review series, this is the first time I legitimately felt like I was watching a real Star Wars movie. At least out of these prequel movies, so... And for me, the standout actors in these were definitely Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ian McDermott as uh, Palpatine, a.k.a. Darth Sidious. Uh, for me, those two were the standouts of this movie. And honestly, there a lot of the actors I had problems with, like Natalie Portman or Hayden Christensen, I think they didn't do that bad of a job in this. And knowing that this is the film that has, I think, in er any Star Wars movie, has the most action. Has the most lightsaber fights, definitely, out of any of the Star Wars films. Like, I can't even count how many lightsaber fights there is in this movie. I seriously can't. I know there's, like, more than two or so. Definitely more than two. And knowing that the pacing of this movie is actually really good. I really dug the pacing. Actually, I really like the story too. This was the first time of these fecking prequel movies where I really where I really actually was invested in. Like this is what just the prequel movie should have been. Showing, you know, you know, Palpatine's, you know, Palpatine corrupting a young Anakin Skywalker more and more to the point where he eventually becomes Darth Vader. We get a little bit of that in the first two movies. Well, we don't get any of that in the first one. We get a little bit of that in episode two, but we get a lot of that in this one. Honestly, looking back on it, you, like, the... First two films of this prequel trilogy are honestly kind of fucking pointless. Yeah, if you were to go back and watch all of these, you don't even need to see the first two. Like, you don't even need to see The Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones to see Revenge of the Sith in order to follow what's going on and everything. In fact, honestly, the story of this is actually rather simple. And another positive is hardly any Jar Jar. Yeah, Jar Jar being, you know, only gets like one scene and that's at the end and it's no dialogue in fact the humor i think is pretty good in this too like there's some humor that i'm like kind of eh, about but and i'll say there are some 
some emotional stuff in this. I think, I do think the emotional stuff would have been much more impactful if the first two films of this series actually did work. Maybe even just about as well as this movie, if not better. If all these three films are continuously good, it might have been more effective. But I think it's effective enough in this. Now only that, John Williams' score is damn good in this too. Like, he really set a high, high bar for these prequel movies, as far as in terms of composing the music. Uh, the effects, I think, are probably the best in this movie, com at least in the prequel films, like prequel era films. And I think it actually does connect a lot, like, does a, like for the most part, a really good job connecting this film, like the prequel movies, to where we see all these characters by the time of A New Hope. And only that, this is the Star Wars prequel I feel like feels like the most cinematic of them. Like, compare, like, if you compare The Phantom Menace and Star Wars, well, The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones with Revenge of the Sith, uh, Revenge of the Sith makes the first two actually look like made for television movies. It really does. And, for me, there's so many other positives with this movie, I can't even name them, so let's just go on to negatives. What are my negatives with this movie? Honestly, for me, well, I do think it's a much better story. It's better written than that. I'm more invested in it. I will say there are some points, especially with dialogue, that I feel like, you know, rears its ugly head. So, it just seems like there's some issues that George Lucas have with telling good story in that. That kind of, kind of, just subtly peeks in. You know, it's trying to poke its head out. Like, for example, you got some of that kind of cringy, romantic dialogue. Although, to be fair, it's not nowhere near as cringy as it was in Attack of the Clones. But it's like, you're so beautiful. That's only because I'm so in love. No, it's because I'm so in love with you. The love that's blinded you? <laughs> like, seriously, that's... Cringy. Although, again, to be fair, it's not as cringy as it was in episode two. So, I'll give it that. But still, there's some of that cringy writing in this. Uh, I don't like the fact that it's mainly digital effects and that. I like. I'm like that with this whole prequel era films. I would really have loved them to use a lot more practical effects and digital effects. But after watching the, the Phantom Menace, I would say even their practical effects look dated in that film, like I mentioned. So maybe it's for the best that they kept on using digital, because, I don't know, who knows the practical effects they could have used in Episodes 2 and 3 would have been dated as well by now. So with that said, I'm going to give Star Wars Revenge of the Sith a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Honestly, this is why I would consider it a good prequel movie, at least one of them. There's at least now two more prequel movies now because of Disney. But, for me, you know, at least at the time when there was only three prequel movies, this was a good prequel movie. Like, the good one. Uh, oh, and of course, the Clone Wars animated film. So, yeah, there's uh, quite a few Star Wars prequel films now. Uh, but this one, I think it's going to probably be the best one. I don't know. I have yet to see the other ones. Basically, this is the film that everybody wanted to see when George Lucas announced that they were doing Star Wars prequels. And I think he delivered for the most part. There's only like two problems I really have with this movie. But I, I, this is definitely one of the better Star Wars movies. I'm not going to lie. So that's it for my review. Thank you guys for watching. And may the Force be with you. Always.